And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.14. Diedrich Bonhoeffer's Christmas sermons included this from the celebration of Advent, where he said, is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. You know, Christmas is a season of traditions. Uh, to most kids, it's Santa Claus is the face of Christmas, and that face is everywhere this time of year. But Christmas can also be a season of sadness, of lost hope and disappointments. Welcome to Mid-South Viewpoint. I'm Byron Tyler. And uh, we do want to wish you a Merry Christmas, and we want to talk about the season with my good friend, Pastor Mike Delisle, who is pastor of Evangel Church. Merry Christmas, Mike. Merry Christmas. Tell me about the season for the Delisle family. You're a grandfather now. Oh, my goodness, yes. (laughs) This season is, um, is a new one for us. So in 2018, three of my children, I have four, three of them got married. And the first one to get married, my son, uh, he has now had a daughter. So this will be our first Christmas with a grandchild. And everything changes. Everything changes. <laughs> yeah, just, it's exciting. Just like that, quickly. It's a very exciting time. It is an exciting time. I'm a grandpa, too, so I can enjoy those sentiments and, and really have a, uh, excitement for the season you know, with, with kids. It's always, it's always fun. Uh, that verse in John 1.14 Uh, The message says the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Do you like that? I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I need to know he's in my neighborhood. You know, (laughs) I do every day, Uh, right? Every day, every day. Why do you think, Mike, God went so far to to move into our neighborhood? Well, I think there's no we have no capacity to understand God. We have no capacity to really grasp his love. And uh, I think it just, it, it absolutely shows that uh, there was no limit or no length that he was not willing to go to. And I think it's such a condescending love that he would, he would take on flesh and uh, so that we would know he knows us. You know, he, he, di- he didn't discover anything new, but he discovered himself to us. And that's an incredible thought. You know, I remember as a child, just uh, Christmas, obviously as a child, it's very exciting. You're thinking about, you know, the toys and looking through it. Absolutely. In, in our day, the Sears catalog. The, the wish book. The wish book, you know, <laughs> circling all the things you would hope to get for Christmas. But, uh, but I remember there was a nativity set that had been in our family for a long time. And there was a simple little yellow warm glow light that was in the top of it that just illuminated the... Uh, the 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 figures in the nativity right you know and right. so i would just be mesmerized by just staring for long periods of time yeah. you know and just looking at the baby jesus and mary and joseph and the shepherds and the sheep and the animals you know that Absolutely. were in that stable it didn't really connect with me you know and i think yeah. for a lot of people they have the the sentiment of, of maybe even have a nativity scene similar to what i described and it's a tradition to put that out and yes. turn that little yellow glowing light on, you know, to reflect <laughs> everything. But it, it doesn't have the same meaning, you mm-hmm. know, for them. Uh, and it wasn't for me until, my goodness, I was 16 years old yeah. when I first understood why Christ came to earth, you know? Yeah, it was it was interesting. You know, you say that. You came to know the Lord at 16. I, I was 17, and it was December 2nd of 1983. And so for me, Christmas... At that point, um, the dimensions, the vividness of it, the reality of Christmas uh, changed. And and you're right. uh, You can understand the traditions. You can look forward to the things that we do at Christmas. But until you know the Christ child, until you realize that baby was born to die, you can't fully appreciate the depth of it. And um, that's one of the things I'm so thankful for, that he, he went so far to again reveal himself to me and show me the depths of his love and um yeah to see it as as his child is an incredible thing you know this time we usually hear if we go to church a a lot of messages uh centered around the birth of christ yes and usually a pastor like yourself will declare the the virgin birth of jesus christ uh but in reality, wouldn't it more be more accurate to say the virgin conception? I mean, there wasn't, you know, can we just talk about that a second? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. The, 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 uh, just to get your head around the sense that uh, the Holy Spirit 
um, caused Eve to conceive, or caused uh, Mary to conceive. We jumped a little too far back in yeah. the Bible there. Uh, to conceive is just an incredible thought. And a spotless, sinless child coming to this world, not, not marred by the sin of man, not the seed of man, um, is, is, again, I don't think we can ever fully get our minds around it, but it captures us. Well, is it really that significant? I mean, that part of the story, is that really that important? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, because uh, even if you go back to Genesis and speak of, of the, the seed of, of Eve that would crush the serpent's head, it had to be from the woman. And it always spoke of the man's seed. And, and you know, and we see that he was born of a virgin coming in spotless, sinless, not tainted, tainted with this inherited sin. It's absolutely critical to our salvation, to our understanding of the depths of God's love. But it, it's something that doesn't always click with everybody. Like no. I mentioned, you know, no. we can we get sentimental about the baby in a manger. Yeah, and I think about, um, you know, even in Luke chapter two, when it, Mary is is taking all of this in, all that's happened to her, and you come to this this point where it says, and she, and she treasured these things. I cannot begin to imagine what was going through that young girl's mind at the center of the salvation of man, that this baby was born. God, very God. Yeah, you know, we have a tendency to look at figures like Mary and others in the Bible, like these great people of faith, you know, and I'm not saying they didn't have faith. Oh, absolutely. But but the, the initial announcement was really a shock to Mary, you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean, she was like confused. Yeah. I mean, she intellectually was trying to figure this out. How is this gonna happen, you yeah. know? I'm a virgin, you know, I don't know a man, and, you know, I'm, I'm engaged to this man. And, of course, even an engagement was quite different yeah, at absolutely. that time. Uh, there was grounds for her to be stoned. Yeah, yeah, and, and to know that she was, and, and it had to have gone through her mind, to know that she was going to face the accusation that would come with being with child, um, yet having not uh, consummated that marriage. Um, I can't imagine the fear, uh, but in that fear, even so, Lord, as, as, as you've said, you know, let your will be done in me. And um, just a phenomenal thing to see uh, her faith, um, but the reality of that, the difficulty of it, the, 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 the drama of it was all so real. And sometimes we, we traditionalize and kind of, you know, whitewash a lot of that. And um, it had to be a very difficult time. I can't imagine what no, it was I like, especially for a, a young, young, young girl. Yeah. You know, in the classic Isaac Watts hymn, Joy to the World, there's a line in that hymn that says, let every heart prepare him room. You know, it seems that our hearts have a no vacancy sign, you know, yeah. uh, if you will, in the window when it comes to God's gift of Jesus. And we try to find our joy by filling our heart with things, you know, mm -hmm. in pursuit of uh, power and accomplishments and things like that. Yeah, there's so many things that would fight for our affections, uh, false things that, that give the, uh, the impression that they can satisfy, but they never can. And it's only until we stop, really, even as, as a child and look at the manger and the Christ child born to die for our... Our, not just our sal salvation, but the satisfaction of our soul. There's so many things around Christmas that come just rushing at us. And I'm thankful that he gives us this time of the year to stop, to pause, to consider, and realize there's no satisfaction apart from Jesus. Talking about that satisfaction, and even many of us try to please those around us, especially yes. a parent, our kids, and, and it can be financially tough, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, of course, the items have gotten, you know, bigger and fancier, and now they're electronic, and <laughs> they've got all these yeah. bells and whistles, and trying to afford all that, you know, an iPhone or a... You know, these gifts, I mean, it can be so crazy. Yeah, and, and so consuming. I mean, you look at the, the cost of the gifts. I mean, uh, I, maybe my G.I. Joe back in the 70s was expensive. Did you I, have the I talking G.I. Joe? I had every G.I. Joe you could imagine. <laughs> uh, Kung Fu Grip was my favorite. But, you know, the the things that, that people want now are also more consuming because they're so – you mentioned the iPhone or different technology. Uh, it's so much more – um, again, consuming that um, it can be overwhelming. 
Yeah, and there's this competition, you know, because we know, you know, Johnny at school, right. you know, is getting that gift. So I got to make sure my kid doesn't go back to class, you know, without having, you know, new clothes or, you know, the newest toy, you know, or it's on the market and yeah. the things they do. I was thinking of that movie that was out a few years ago where there was just one gift that everybody tried to get, you know, yeah. and there was no more left. You know, there's this <laughs> fighting, you know, for the gift. I mean, we, we like we seem like we lose our minds, you know, at Christmas time. It does. And, and again, I think that's that's the world pressing in, trying to drown out the reality of Christmas. You know, so much. Um, you know, pride and competition when, you know, the Lord would say, peace, be still. Just, just look into the eyes of this child, and, uh, and that's where hope is found. How do we become intentional about making room for Christ in our hearts? Well, I think you start with the biblical truth that we have and consider it deeply. I mean, we, we read the Christmas story and we look at Luke chapter 2 or the other, you know, the other tellings of, of what happened. And I think sometimes we read them through as if it's a speed read and, you know, it's, it's just a story. It's not a story. It's our story. It's his story. It's, and to sit and to think on those things deeply. Uh, I think meditating on the Word of God is something that um, the hurry of the day just argues against. And I think we have to deliberately, intentionally stop and say, God, just show me anew the realities of this wonder. And... Um, we have to push back against the rush. Many families will bring the, the Advent calendar into yeah. their homes. Have you done that? Uh, we've done that in the past, and I think that's a wonderful way to build your anticipation to not only the fact that he has come, but that he's coming again. And uh, I think that's a wonderful way to do it, again, to uh, intentionally consider the realities of the story. What's the balance between tradition and the reality of why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, I, I'm not sure I have the answer to that one. That's, that's something I struggle with every year because we, you know, we're warned by those traditions and, and they have meaning within our families. And I think they're important. And I think tradition is good. But tra tradition should not drown out um, the realities of, of the gospel truth. And so I think with every family, uh, there's a balance that's there between tradition and, um, and, and scriptural truth. And uh, we're still striving. Again, with the new grandchild this year, <laughs> it'll be a new adventure trying to bring all that together. Oh, it'll be exciting around the Zalao home for sure, I know. Absolutely. Well, you have uh, a couple of members of your church that are with us today. Yes. The Chews. And they have actually been on our Christmas specials in the past. And uh, I have invited them to, to join us today to, to share in some music. Uh, Bethany uh, has lost her voice. <laughs> so <laughs> we did some rearranging. So we're going to provide some instrumental music. And I think this That'd is really wonderful. quite uh, appropriate for our conversation as we talk about just kind of pulling back from the stress of Christmas and, and from the, the pressure of everything. Just a little, maybe close our eyes and reflect on the music. And, and the words usually of these songs already come to our hearts when we hear you yes. know, the, the music played, but uh, I know the Chews are a special family to, to you and your Absolutely. church. Absolutely. You know, just the friendship that they, they, they bring to me and my family and, and our church and uh, their, their gifts in, in helping lead us in worship. Uh, this time of the year is always very special. And, and even when Bethany loses her voice right before the Christmas musical, <laughs> not to bring up a sore truth, uh, <laughs> the reality is that God is so much bigger than that, and he brings us together to celebrate uh, it's a wonderful thing. Before we get them to uh, bring some music for us, mm -hmm. I want to have just a, maybe a few cents. Jonathan hasn't lost his voice. <laughs> yes. We're going to switch positions and have Jonathan maybe come and just share a little bit about the Chew family Christmas. Great. And uh, then we'll bring some of that wonderful music. That would be great. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming by the studio today to celebrate Christmas with us, with Pastor Mike and uh, your wife, Bethany, who's not able to talk right now. I know. But uh, so you're representing the Tube family. And this isn't your first time on our Christmas specials. You've been by yeah. before. Yeah. It's it's always an honor to get to get that call or text from you. And, and Bethany and I, uh, we, we love it. We love getting an opportunity to come and share um, with the listeners and with you guys, and um, it's a, it's definitely a, an honor for us. It um, is such a blessing to, to share. And I, as a professional musician who travels, yeah. uh, recently you've been on the road with Big Daddy Weave. Is yeah, that right? That's right. Yeah, all uh, for the past year, I played a, um, 130 shows with them, and um, it was a, a, just a fantastic experience. They're um, some amazing uh, men of God, and uh, their hearts, and just their 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 desire to lead the church in worship, but then 
also to just lead them in um, in prayer. Like we had some really amazing nights of just praying over our, our praying in the service over over people and just seeing some um, really amazing things on the road. And and to to say that modern miracles aren't happening anymore is just a lie because I I saw some really amazing things while I was traveling that. Um, you know, just made me step back and go, what, what, what do I believe in, in my faith? Like I saw things that happened that just, you know, I, I, I go, okay, that's God working here in this moment. The Holy Spirit's act active in these communities, not just in the communities, but, um, um, just out and about. And, and you just have to dig in a little bit deeper and go, what's, what am I doing? What am I, what, what do I really believe in? And, yeah. um, and do I have enough faith that, um, when I pray for something I want to, and, and you, you go and speak it, speak to, and into that moment of going, I want, I want God to step in this moment and heal this person. And, um, just, I saw that happen and I, I had to, I just had to open my heart bigger and go, God, what are you doing? Um, how can I, how can I trust you more to believe in, in this and in, in you and that you are still at work. And so, yeah, sorry. That's a, that was a no, no, no. I love that. No, I love that perspective because you know what's what's interesting is uh, you're like I said, a world class violinist yeah. performer, <laughs> and you know and what you do is entertaining, but and, and that's okay. Yeah. God's giving you this gift, but it's 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 beyond that. You yeah. know, like you said, praying over those. But talk just for a second because I don't. Yeah. I want to have the time when we hear the music, but about what you as you traveled and you've yeah. been on you know concerts all over this country. Uh, and, and you see people respond to the heart of God to worship. Yeah. And uh, and we know worship is not music, just music. You That's know? right. Uh, it helps guide us, and it, it's, it's, right. it can be part of that. Yeah. But uh, and we will be singing in heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I tell our congregation all the time that you know what we do on stage is is a response to what God has been doing throughout the week. Um, music is a is a vocal and um, you know I guess like formed formed response it's not just a cry it's not just a groan it's a it's like i'm putting words uh, the, i'm singing words that have been written in response to what god has done but i'm using those words right now as a response to what god has been doing in my life um and so uh we saw you know we, we, and that was something that was encouraged um to us when we we're on the road you know what we do on stage is you know we would be challenged afterwards you know af- after a show we would talk we you know decom uh, debrief. Debrief. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, debrief after a show and just like, you know, what's God, what, what did God tell you during the service or what did, you know, what scripture has been stirring your heart? And um, we, that was, that's when you're on the road together, uh, every day is like a week, every week's like a month. Like it just, it, it goes by. And so you, you have long conversations that span over, over time. And, um, you know, God just, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that I was reading the Christmas story way before Christmas because there's, I was really convicted by a lot of what was going on in the story of the emotional and the social aspect of what was happening then. And just thinking that, you know, the pressures that Mary would have to go into to go to Joseph's town, that he, she was walking back into his familiarity where he grew up and the things that, you know, may have been happening there. Um, but, but so, so what all that to say, the things that I learned from those moments translated into, well, there's an, we, we've been talking about this at church, this, this expectation, this anticipation, this holy anticipation, this desire to know, know him yes. and to experience that moment with him. And I love that because, you know, when we make the anticipation and the experience about the day, mm. about the gift and what I'm going to do, the activity, and after it's over with, there's like, a, it, we're deflated. There's yeah. like, there's emptiness. Yeah. But when if we when we make it about him about oh, yeah. Jesus, it's totally yeah. it's different, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's and so that's what we we would pray for the services is this anticipation that that Christ was speaking through us in our personal lives that we would be able to engage people in the public of the stage and afterwards talking with people and talking with um, people that came to the concerts. And so uh, to wrap that back, kind of back up to where we were on the road. Um, just praying into each night that God would just use the nights we would, you know, we would be a, just merely a tool to to be able to help break down walls in people's hearts. I think that's the one thing that we saw the most was a lot of people, 
people that would come to these shows, they were like, I, I didn't want to come to this show. My friend brought me. I, I just wanted to sit at home and be alone. And they would come to the show and they experienced something. Mike would, you know, would have a word that he had been reading or would say something from stage. And we'd, we'd meet these people afterwards and they, was, they would tell us this, like the, these thoughts of suicide and the thoughts of self-hate. And they heard something in those moments that they would walk away. They, they had heard something and their attitude and their heart changed. Wow. Um, and we were like, that's not us. That is not us. There, we are, none of us is doing the changing. That, that is the Holy Spirit. That is the Word of God. That is, that is Jesus working in their lives at that moment. And uh, it, it's just a matter of going, okay, are we as the people on stage going to be willing to share what has happening in our lives? Um, because at that moment, as when we share, it can affect somebody else's life because that's the way the, that's the, way the, the message works. Yes. You I share the it. hope. Yes. You share what it, God's been doing. Um, and again, it goes back to like what... What are you anticipating in this time of, especially in Christmas season? What are we anticipating? Are we anticipating cool, you know, gifts like you know, kind of what you were talking about earlier with Mike, or are we anticipating that God would use the joy that we have that we've received in the story that we have, this beautiful moment of of Him coming to Earth, taking on earthly shape, to not just show us in person in His personal form, but teach us and, and, and give us hope in a physical, in a physical person and just say, this is, this is, this is the hope. This is, this is the thing I want you to share. Wow. The love I want to share. I want you to share the love that I brought, um, and the share that I'm going to teach you how to, to, to share with people. He stirs my heart to, in, in, in very unique ways in pictures and in things that life experiences. And I hope other people experience God this way too. Um, but I was talking to Bethany the other night, this, this idea came to mind when I was looking at our Christmas tree and, and, uh, I was like, I, I, I didn't have all the words at the moment, but it, it kind of formulated over the past few days of, um, it's hard to see a, a single burnt out Christmas tree light in the back or in, in the middle of it until you like really dig into the tree and you go, Oh, that lights out. Um, because all the other lights, you know, are, are kind of covering it over. Um, and that's similar to the season. There's a lot of joy in this season. Obviously there's a lot of brightness to this season. There's a lot of happiness, but there is someone around you that it may, they, they may have a light out there, that their light may be out, that they are in a place that they don't want to see anybody. They don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to just hide. That's the moment that you need to come into their life and share the hope of Christ with them. That w- and that may look like bringing food over. That may be like, hey, can, what can I do to help you? You know, with your house. What can I do? What do you need? It? Do you need yard work done? Do you need? Do you need something? Do you need groceries? What can we? What can we do as a, as a family, as a church? How can we step into your life and be light into your to hopefully reignite your light. Yes. Um, so that, that was that was a, that was something that God spoke to me the other day. It's like, what am I doing? What am I going to do as a family, or as as us as a family, as a church? What are we going to do to bring light into our community to to find the missing light that's that that burnt out light that may be out there that um, we can step in and help reignite.
beautiful music from the Chews. Mike, didn't you enjoy that? Absolutely. They are they are incredible. Such a blessing. I love that song. And as I said, uh, a time to kind of just close our eyes and reflect. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, there's, we've talked about this before. There's just something about music that unites us in worship and such a vehicle to kind of ignite our hearts to just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What a Savior. Amen. You know? And that's what we have in this Christ child who I'm so thankful that God's plan was to rescue us. And it was not just in a cradle. It was on a cross, right? That's right. That's right. And, you know, it comes full circle that uh, to understand the depths of the joy that we celebrate in the child, we have to understand the cross and that Jesus uh, proclaimed it is finished. He has provided for us. He has shown his love. He has done all that, that he can do. And uh, now we just respond. There's another aspect of the story, too, his return. Amen. Amen. You know, when we speak about Advent and, and his first Advent and, and look forward to him coming again and looking forward to that day when we and all, every tongue, every tribe will, will worship the Lamb and uh, we'll spend eternity enjoying his presence. Oh, my. It's going to be wonderful. And, friend, we hope that that place in your heart is uh, with Christ, that you know him in a way that... Uh, you're going to be there with us. That's right. You know? That's right. And Mike, somebody maybe is curious, and they've been hearing this story, and maybe for the first time it's, it kind of clicked. What, what can they do right this moment to receive this gift of Jesus? Well, you know, you recognize what the gospel truth is, and that is a man was in desperate need because of sin, and uh, there was really no way that we could reconcile ourselves with God. But God, in his love, uh, demonstrated that in that way. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even as we celebrate this Christmas, we realize that we receive that truth and trust in what Jesus has done. So what a person can do is understand that the gospel is Jesus came and lived a spotless, sinless life, that baby born to die. Yet there came the day when he willingly allowed himself to be nailed to the cross to satisfy an infinite offense against an infinite God, and in love laid down his life, body bruised and blood poured out for us to receive the gift of that provision in Jesus Christ. What they can do right now is realize today is the day of salvation. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for bringing your team <laughs> with Bethany and Jonathan here to help us celebrate this wonderful occasion. Oh, it's such a privilege. We appreciate it. And as we close, I also want to mention that Jonathan Chu has a brand new CD, Songs uh, My Father Loved. Yes. And uh, his father passed away just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And what a, a dear man of God. Yes. And uh, these are some songs, a reflection that Jonathan has created with his amazing violin playing, and I'm sure there's some other instrumentation here too. But uh, this CD is available, and if you would like to get a copy, you can go to Jonathan Chu, C H U Creative dot com. Jonathan Chu Creative dot com. And these CDs are available. Songs like He Leadeth Me, Holy, 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 Be Thou My Vision, Tis So Sweet and the old rugged cross and these are wonderful songs to enjoy and maybe to order as christmas gifts or any time of the year you could listen to these songs that's right and they are a blessing i've listened to them all and well, it's such a wonderful blessing well mike thank you so much again and i just want to pray blessings on you and dana and thank the family you as you celebrate christmas merry christmas to you merry christmas to you and to yours as well <laughs> all right well friends that's all the time we have on this edition of mid-south viewpoint thanks for stopping by merry christmas